Hey guys, Virtus here and welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 beginner tutorial series and in today's episode we're going to be going over an introduction to GPU sprites inside of Unreal Engine. Now in the previous video, if you haven't seen it already, we created this simple little uh, spark particle system that looks quite nice. However, I want to introduce you to GPU sprite, uh, sprites so you have a whole bunch of different functionality and you can also help on the um, performance side of things. So there's a couple of reasons why you might want to use GPU sprites instead of the ones that we're using now that are rendered on the CPU. So I'm going to go ahead and show you a couple of reasons for that. So the first thing is going to be when you have lots and lots of these little sprite emitters on the CPU, it's really going to reduce the performance, so you're going to get a lower FPS. Um, also, if we do things like trying to spawn loads and loads of particle systems at once, you're going to run into a couple of problems. For example, you're going to see that it keeps cutting out uh, and starting again, and that's just because we, you know, we're hitting the max. Um, you know, sprite count. And you can see in the scene, it's actually starting to lag there. It doesn't look as nice as it does. If I whack it up to something like 5,000, it gets even worse. Um, you can see now it's just sending bursts because it just keeps hitting the maximum sprite count. And what this is doing is essentially just telling you that, you know, you're really hitting the performance hard. You shouldn't be doing this. Um, so yeah, you should go ahead and render that on the GPU instead. So let's go ahead and show you exactly how we can do this. So I'm going to leave my particle system exactly how it is for now. I'm going to save it and I'm going to duplicate this and we're going to create a second version using GPU sprites. So I'm just going to duplicate it and I'm just going to name this underscore, uh, I'm going to name this GPU underscore test sparks. You, don't, you can call it whatever you want, but I'm just going to work with this for now, just so I can, you know, tell which one is which. And I'm also going to drag a second, uh, you know, the GPU sprites into the scene as well, and I'm going to have them side by side, just like this, so we can see uh, a nice comparison between CPU sprites and GPU sprites. So let's go ahead and open up the GPU test sprites, and I'll show you how to change it into GPU sprites. So what I'm going to do is right click in this little blank space here and I'm going to go to type data and I'm going to press new GPU sprites. And now it will be con it will be converted to GPU sprites, but there's actually a few problems that we can see here. So I'm going to make this full screen and go over those. So first things first, you can see an emitter has modules that are incompatible with this type data. So when you change it to a different type of data, some of the modules are going to be different. For example, this collision model module, you can see we've got the big red X, that's just me, it, it telling me that it's not going to work. We do actually have a module specifically for, um, you know, GPU sprites. So we've got uh, collision scene depth for that, and I'll go over that in a moment. And you can also see the particle system has no fixed bounding box and contains a GPU emitter. So if I save that, I'm going to show you exactly what GPU emitters do, and why they're, uh, you know, better for performance. So let me just go ahead and show you this. So we've got both of our emitters here, and if I move my viewport, you can see the CPU emitter on the right is always going to be rendered, which is kind of bad for performance, whereas a GPU emitter, as soon as the emitter location goes off the screen, you're going to see it stops rendering. There's a few problems there because we want to see it, you know, as it's gliding through. That's because we haven't set up the bounds. But you can see if we have loads of GPU emitters and we have them around the level, when they're not on screen, they're not going to be rendered and it's going to help a lot with performance. So let's go ahead and show you exactly how you can do that. So what we need to do is set up the bounds. Um, so whenever, you know, that boundary area is on the screen, it's going to show it instead of just the emitter location. So I'm going to open up my GPU test box. First thing I'm going to do is whack up the number of sp the spawn rate and I'm going to set this to something like 2500 and they are just going to flow out like this and it looks really nice and the performance isn't too bad either. So you can see they're just chucking out and it sort of looks like fluid, it's really cool. And you know, as soon as like, that comes off the screen, the performance goes back, uh, is, you know, it's not too affected, it's really nice. Um, so let's go ahead and show you how to set up the bounds. So what you can do is just press this little button up here to display the bounds and you've also got a little arrow here so you can actually set fixed bounds and then it's going to automatically generate bounds for you based on you know the lifetime and however far 
the emitters are actually going to go. So if it was to adjust things like the velocity, it would, you know, push it the bounds out further. But for now, that should work. What I might have to do actually is open this up, restart level, restart simulation, and just that's just going to update it. And now when it when the emitter goes off the screen, you know, the rest whatever should be shown like, you know, the flying particles they're still going to be shown. But as soon as it all goes, it's all good. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what bounds are going to do. And whenever you make changes, I also advise that you, you know, set these bounds again so that it updates. So one thing that I showed you earlier is that some of the modules don't work. And we're going to have to work with modules specifically for GPU sprites now. So we can play around with a few things here. So light, uh, the light module doesn't work, you know, uh, from our old ones, we're going to have to add that in. Collision doesn't work, so we're going to have to add that in. So let's go ahead and add a new collision one in here. So if we go down to uh, collision, chuck it in there, and now this should work for us. And we have a whole bunch of different settings. Instead of damping and stuff, we have resilience. And that's pretty much just how much it's going to bounce once again. Previously, this used to just be called collision and then scene depth for GPU sprites. So for those of you with an older version of the engine, you're going to know exactly what's going on. So let's go ahead and work, and now we, you see that we've got this collision, you can see they're really bouncing. If I go and delete this again, delete module, it's going to stop bouncing, it's just going to keep going through the floor. Let's add it once again, collision, Ooh, computer's getting a bit laggy there, and they're going to bounce. And we can play around with the resilience, just change this so they don't fly as much. I'm going to change it to something like 0 0.1, and you know, they're sort of going to flow on the floor now, it's not going to bounce too much, 0 0.3. It's going to have a little bit of bounce. You can play around with this uh, however you want. Also, for this collision, we've got something called friction. For those of you that don't know friction, uh, what friction is, it's essentially the force uh, from the ground. Um, so the ground is basically going to slow it down. You can see they're flowing really fast uh, across this area at the moment. Also, if you noticed, you know, when I start looking away, it stops rendering these little GPU sprites. What we have to do is just set the fixed bounds again and it will be all good, you know, you're going to see it all the time. Um, so just double check your bounds, make sure it's all good. You might have to move those around uh, or whatever, but I'm just going to leave it for this now. But collision, so we got friction, we can change this. At the moment there's zero friction, so it's just going to slide. If we change it to something like 1, it's not going to move, change it to 0 0.5. You know, it only moves a little bit, 0 0.2 moves a bit more, or zero is just going to be zero friction, and it's just going to keep on going and going and going. And you might have to adjust things like lifetime to accommodate for that. So if you don't want it to last as long, you might want to change it to something like two, and you'll notice now they don't go as far, or 1.5. Um, you're also going to want to change the minimum as well. Make sure you double check the minimum and maximum settings, um, but yeah. So I just wanted to show you, um, you know, GPU sprites and how they can be useful, especially for rendering. We can do a lot more with them, we can have more sprites, and we have a whole bunch of different functionality. Um, one thing that I also want to introduce you to is vector fields, but I'm going to leave that to a different video as we need to do quite a lot of work for that. Um, but feel free to play around with GPU sprites, make some really cool stuff. That is everything for this video. Thanks for watching, comment, like, and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.